Thank you very much. All right, so good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, again, my name is Jeffrey Fry. For those that have dialed in uh, about a few seconds ago, I have a speaker with us today, presenter. Uh, thank you very much for registering. I'm sure you've read up a little bit about or seen a little bit about uh, Max. Oh, sorry, Marius. <laughs> um, and um, there will be a few more people attending. And Dieter in the back end. Dieter, thank you very much for your time today. He's the administrator for KISA. Um, for your information. And if you do not know, Dieter is actually based in George. So we're really taking this uh, webinar solution to all sorts of ends of not only South Africa, but also international. So a little bit about Marius. And Marius, maybe if you can just share us with your with your second name. Uh, we In South Africa, we call it your surname. <laughs> I didn't get uh, it to right, right early on. Yeah. It's called Marius Kitowski. Thanks, Jeffrey. Thank you. Sir. <laughs> Bit of a tongue twister there for us. Um, but I thank you very much for that. And just a little bit of background about Marius. I went above that he was born in 1996, am I right? Yeah, okay. And also then uh, finished a paramedic education in 2015. Uh, worked as a paramedic since then. So um, been seeing, I'm sure, all sorts of interesting uh, scenarios and events. Um, as well as he's finished a Bachelor of Science in Sports Management in 2019 as well as then a Master of Science in Strategic Management in 2011. Um, I think on part-time, if I can say this, Marius helps out with lifeguarding. So he's a really, really fit man, um, an all-rounder. And uh, clearly you can see he looks after his physique very well too. <laughs> and um, on a side note, and I'm sure most of us will be surprised to hear this, and maybe Marius, you can touch a little bit about it. And um, a bit of a daredevil, if I, if I must say it like that, uh, is a professional slackliner. And uh, I had to Google a little bit and um, realize that um, there's a lot of risk involved in that. So maybe if you can tell us and share a little bit about your highest and widest um, uh, walk that you had to do. Um, and um, you've been ranked number one in 20, 2021. Well done to you. Congratulations on that. And um, obviously, you clearly, you re you're a man of peace because you can't be really stressful walking on a, on a, on a line across two buildings or a or a ravine or whatever the case may be. But also on a side note, you're also an ex-pro swimmer. So maybe you can just share a little bit about that, very small little bit. Um, what were you doing and what was your forte, breaststroke um, and so forth. Um, but today, the real focus point is about ECG Max and its possibilities. Um, with the ECG Max, you not only get the usual 12 lead, but interpretation, but you also get the 22 lead interpretation. Um, and that's a much more comprehensive picture of the heart muscle, including posterior wall and right side. I think it's a very, um, a very interesting topic. I myself, I'm, I'm very interested to hear uh, what are the, 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 the pros and cons and what you have to share with us. Thank you very much for your time again, Marius, and I hand over to you. Thanks, Jeffrey. I first will start my presentation of the the monitor, please tell me if you can see it correctly. Right. Yes, fantastic. I see it. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Jeffrey, for the short introduction. Yes, I, I hear you. Okay. So, first of all, thanks for the introduction. Thanks for the invitation. Um, also, thanks for the in-depth introduction of myself. Um, once again, my name is Marius Kitowski. Um, I'm now 26 years old, and as Jeffrey shortly scratched on my CV, um, I'm an ex-pro swimmer, 103, 53, and with at the age of 16, I started slacklining. I, I'm not a high wire, as you might see in Google. I'm a trick liner, so basically everything what you do on the trampoline, I do on the five centimeter wide and 25 meter long wire. Um, I was world ranked number one last year, 2021. So. Pretty happy, happy me last year. Um, besides that, um, parallel to my sports, I always went for the academic uh, approach. Therefore, after finishing school, I attended the volunteer year in Germany, um, then finished my paramedic education, studied sports management in Innsbruck in Austria, finished with a master of science. And now um, I'm working for GS Corpels in Germany, and I'm responsible for South Africa, Middle East, and England, France. Um, actually, I had the pleasure to be in South Africa three weeks ago, so uh, I have to admit I'm in love with your country. But besides that, 
I would uh, like to straightly jump into today's topic. Um, as you've heard, ECG Max, um, you may now ask, what is this? And I would like to start with a small analogy. Um, I don't know if some people of you know this, so I will give you some hints. Um, first question I always ask, who knows what we see here? So you might now say, what is the sky coming up now with a mountain? <laughs> um, if you have not seen this one, maybe you have seen this one. This is the Swiss Matterhorn. Swiss Matterhorn is one of the highest mountains in the Alps with 4,478 meters and one of the most famous mountains in the world, except for the Table Mountain, of course. Um, what is this guy now talking about mountains? Um, the Matterhorn has a pretty much the same silhouette as in the ECG as we know it. What most people do not know is the picture I showed you in the previous slide, the Matterhorn from the backside. What this means, we will come to in a few slides. So first of all, ECG, what is ECG? Basically, this picture here on the right might be an old and grainy picture, but the one, the gentleman you see here is basically, I would like to call him the grandfather of ECG, Wilhelm Eindhoven, who invented the first three leads on the nowadays known ECG. Back in the days, it looked like this. He had to put one foot and both arms into a salt water and therefore derive the, the uh, electrodes and therefore interpret it or try to interpret an ECG. Luckily today, we do not use these big machines and also not the water containers because this is going to be a little bit tricky on gravel roads, in my opinion. But what do we have today? The gold standard today is a 12 lead ECG. It was introduced, at least in the European world, it was introduced 20 years ago to the hospital setup and to the pre-hospital setup, well accepted and evidence-based. Together with the leads of Wilson, Goldberger, and they form the 12 lead ECG. And as shortly noted, as shortly scratched on my CV, I've been a paramedic for seven years. And we all know the scenario. Ah, oh, there might be a posterior infarct. We're not quite sure. I mean, we can kind of interpret it from the ECG. Um, what do we do now? Period. We turn the patient around, we put the ECG electrodes on the back and try our best. So this means we have to walk around the mountain, a lot of effort, which is therefore not that practiced um, in a real world. But actually it was, it is recommended by certain guidelines to check the posterior wall of the heart. And this is the future. The couple three with ECG max. ECG max means 22 leads. You might count now what? How many leads? So first of all, the general Goldberger, Eindhoven and Wilson uh, leads. Furthermore, the right-sided leads, the posterior leads, and the orthogonal leads according to Frank. What do you do now with the orthogonal leads? We come back later. So what this means is you get a completely different angle of the heart, basically. You get a 360 degree angle, a 360 picture of the heart. As you see it right now here, it's the human heart from different perspective. Since 20% of all acute myocardial infarct are due to posterior wall myocardial infarction, there's a need for posterior investigation. And this is also backed up by the ESC guidelines, which, as I previously said, recommend the routine recording of additional leads as the posterior and the right precardial leads, which is surely not a common practice in most of the countries, such as Germany, because been there, done that, just take him to the hospital, then they can turn him around. So ECG max, more 22 leads, uh, plus on the 12th lead ECG, you have the posterior leads, V7, V8, V9. The right-sided leads, V3R, V4R, V5R, and V6R, and the vector leads. So this is a lot of paper. <laughs> you will have to print out more. But the cool thing, though, is this complete setup, this complete paper, this complete ECG, you will get without any further ECG electrodes, because luckily we are in the future, we do not have to put in our arms into salt water. We have algorithms, we have mathematics, 
which then further calculate those leads. And now we come to the cool part. I mean, this is already, in my opinion, pretty cool, but I told you here about those vector leads. What does vector leads mean? The vector cardiogram, which is a vector lead, is a method of recording the magnitude and the direction of the electrical forces that are generated by the heart by means of a continuous series of vectors that from curving lines that form curving lines around the central point. The vector cardiography was developed by E. Frank in the mid 1950s. And since the human body is a three dimensional structure, the basic idea is to construct a three orthogonal leads containing all the electric information. And the three leads are represented by the right left axis, the X axis, the head to feet axis, epsilon, and the front back axis, Z. To derive this information, initially seven additional electrodes needed to be applied, which is, in my opinion, most likely the reason to not be so commonly used in its application and its complex uh, specific interpretation. I mean, I won't dive into the interpretation of vector loops in here because uh, I was told we have an hour and this for sure won't be enough to interpret vector loops. But nowadays, these vectors can be derived from a reduced set of a standard 12 lead ECG electrode set, which means no change of current practice routines, but yet all benefits of this method can be repeated. So what you see here um, are the vector leads X, Y, and Z. You have then the circle of the frontal plane, the horizontal plane, and the sagittal plane. So a healthy cardiac tissue might look like this. So you have a clean, as I would like to call it, circle in all three planes. Now this function of the heart might be displayed in something like this. And you may know question how about this on an ECG monitor. Yes, this doesn't make any sense on an ECG monitor, in my opinion. The vector loops derived from the corpus 3 can only be seen in our so-called program. It's called Corpus Mission Life. So what is Corpus Mission Life? Just a short introduction. It's basically a live um, presentation of all the data you see in the Corpus 3. And this is then what you can see get out of the device. So instead of having it all on a small piece of paper, which in my opinion doesn't make any sense, a doctor in the clinic can have it all displayed on his big monitor and see here everything by all three leads. In this case, it's a healthy heart. Actually, this is a real ECG, which in my opinion, it can increase the interpretation of the ECG and in general, the evaluation of the, of the situation of the human heart tremendously. And last but not least, all good things are three. I would like to show you, and this is what I as a paramedic would have loved to have back in the days, so-called CEB. CEB is short for cardiac electrical biomarker. The cardiac electrical biomarker is an index of electrical field of the heart. It measures the polarity and the probability of a myocardial injury. And you might now think, Myocardial injury, that sounds familiar. Yes, basically this is similar specificity and sensitivity as a troponin T blood test. So you might now think again, eh, troponin wasn't just a thing where the big machine where I put my blood test into and wait a couple of times. Yes, but just without blood. So there are solutions for troponin T tests in a pre-hospital setup, which are most commonly uh, that not so commonly used mainly because of the costs of consumer bills. Basically, you need big machines and so on and so on. But the troponin T test covers the biochemistry part of a myocardial damage, but there is also a change in the electrical field of the heart. So therefore, CEB, the cardiac electrical biomarker, covers and measures those changes in the polarity of the heart and therefore creates this circle here. You may now think, oh, this circle, what does it mean? I mean, it's super simple. 
you have down here, you have the, the value of the cardiac electrical biomarker, in this case, 127. So from 95 up to high, it's a clear indication of an acute myocardial injury, in this case, red. This orange case here, 66 to 94, um, is an interdeterminate, which in our scientific research only occurred in 10% of the cases. This could mean there's a small chance of a myocardial damage or there is an old damage um, of the heart muscle. And everything here on the green side, 0 to 65, is a normal T-polar heart. So as you might know, we have the same three values for the troponin T test. And yes, those are exactly the same values, except uh, not the same values, but um, the, same, the same differentiation in those three parts. And now to the technical part. What does, how does it work? Because obviously we're still using the same monitor um, that some of us um, are using since many years. So the technology behind it is that you need a COPPLE 3 monitor with any sort of internet connection, be it uh, Wi-Fi uh, or a SIM card. And then the COPPLE 3 sends all the ECG data to the COPPLE.mission server. The server does all the calculation, the algorithm does all the calculation, all the math, and sends it back to the COPPLE 3. The COPPLE 3 then, either way, prints it out, displays it to you on the display, or can send it via email or via fax. So the real life scenario in this case would be you're out on the field um, or even in a hospital setup. You're in a hospital, you're not pretty sure with ECG because we all know ECG can be quite complex and not speaking about vector loops now. And this means that either way you can now send it via email to your doctor of choice, to your cardiologist of choice, um, your cardiologist of choice can also have an access to the Corpus, uh Mission Live server and see it directly on his screen and therefore can come up with a proper interpretation of the ECG, of the CEB and of the vector loops. So you may now think, oh, maybe is this all just a marketing claim? No. It is all evidence-based medical technology made in Germany, scientifically proven by the John Hopkins Medicine, Henry Forthoff System, University of Basel, and in my opinion, most important, the European Society of Cardiology. So not just some miracle we try uh, to, to bring with our products. No, this is medical technology that should, uh, first of all, increase the possibilities but furthermore help all the paramedics, nurses and doctors out there to treat the patient correctly and to back up the diagnosis. And therefore in the end, in the ideal case, save lives. So with that said, I'm not a big fan of talking. <laughs> with that said, I'm gonna keep it short and spicy and say thank you for your attention. And we are now open to questions. What we mentioned before with Jeffrey, if you have in-depth questions, I would, uh, you can uh, send you your, your contact details and then we can furthermore send you the Cobalt Science document, which contains all scientific papers according to these topics. So you can get an in-depth um, information on this one. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Marius and Neto. I um, did just post it on the chat box. You'll notice there he said any questions, you're more than welcome to post them onto the chat box. Sorry, I didn't say that in the beginning, but any questions, please pop them on the chat box. Marius can um, answer a few questions. We still have actually ample time for that, that today's slot. And um, maybe I can pose the first question if you, if I may, Marius, while listening to you. In which scenario, or should I say, yeah, scenario, would, would this particular um, interpretation be useful. You mentioned Nano about being a paramedic. Um, and so would it, would you would you see paramedic? Would you see rather in a doctor's rooms? You mentioned hospital Nano. Um, from your opinion, what where would you see this kind of uh, interpretation being used the, the best? I think, first of all, thanks for the question. In my opinion, um, also from my experience, there are 
some paramedics and some paramedics. So yeah, in my opinion, you have to take a step back. First of all, um, first of all, what kind of paramedics do you want to be? Do you just want to be the guy collecting the patient and bring it to the hospital and leave him, him or her for good? Or do you want to be the paramedic to fully investigate and fully understand what is going on with the patient? And for that sense, um, since 20% of all my uh, myocardial infarcts are posterior, there is the scenario of using ECG Max to fully investigate on the myocardial damage on the infarct that is going on, and therefore um, adjust uh, the treatment of the patient. Okay, I see there's a few more questions starting to come through now. I cannot hear you, Jeffrey. There's a few more questions coming through now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. There's a few more questions coming through. Next question is from, from Dave. Dave's asking, are, are any of the leads derived or does the, do, or, or does these require 22 electrodes? No, that's, that's the main sense of ECG Max that you only need um, the 10 electrodes in total because the rest are derived. Um, and they are basically, so the, the additional uh, leads are derived from the, from the first, second, and V2, because these are, according to science, they, those electrodes with the safest positioning by paramedics. Mm, okay. Then next question from Jock is asking, can this device detect pacemakers? First of all, it depends on the, on the algorithm that is based on the device. So we have HES and we have Glasgow and we have Glasgow 4 algorithms. Um, First of all, it depends obviously on the pacemaker, on the situation itself, whether it's working correctly, not correctly, or whatever. Um, the device and the ECG can detect the pacemakers, but obviously it also depends on the paramedic to fully investigate on the ECG. Okay, there's a bit of a out of the box question here. So um... I'm just I'm just posing the question out there. Maybe you can maybe you can give me a few tips. Um, in Germany, they you guys do things a bit different than yeah in South Africa. Um, has this kind of technology ever been used in a cath lab? To be honest, I have to check whether it already has been tested in a cath lab. Um, I know that is well used already by um, operators all over the world. So one of our key operators, if you look for air rescue, for example, would be at Zermatt. Um, or the German Air Rescue, ADAC, um, ERF. Um, they are all using ECG Max and also the telemedicine solutions to send it out to the hospital. Obviously in Germany, we do not have that long transportation times. Um, in the more rural areas uh, where you have deserts or best example in Norway um, on the offshore rigs, they also use it quite commonly because then they can already send it out to the doctors uh, in the clinics. And therefore get an interpretation from the doctor's side. Obviously, um, you have to differentiate between the different systems in the world. I mean, in Germany, we're working with an emergency doctor. So therefore we as paramedics, sadly, we do not have um, that many rights. So therefore we always have to be backed up by a doctor. So in this case, this is uh, essential. Um, as far as I'm informed, you guys have way more rights in South Africa, lucky you. Um, um, so therefore, I'm, I'm sure you can also use it as a paramedic itself and back up your diagnosis on this with this one. I'm just waiting for a few more questions. If there's any questions from the audience. I couldn't hear you. Just waiting for a few more questions from okay, the audience. Okay. Uh, one more question then from my side while we wait for maybe another question to come through. Um, are, are there any, hmm, uh, maybe, yeah, well, let me ask the question. Are there any instances in South Africa or references in South Africa yet? Yeah, in South Africa, um, we are quite strong already on the air rescue, such as halo aviation, uh, rocket aviation. Um, Maybe for further references, my colleague Jean-Baptiste, who is also in the audience, um, 
can help me out in this case that I won't say anything wrong. I don't know, Jean, are you you online? Yeah, um, so quite correctly said as Marius, we're currently in operation in two major HEMS providers, being Halo Aviation and Rocket HEMS, that have multiple bases that make use of this technology. Um, and we're currently busy with a project um, that will hopefully be rolled out at Nelson Mandela's Children's Hospital as Red Cross. Uh, we're hoping to get some units in that would make use of the ECG Max and telemetry as a, a software solution. Thanks, John. Thank you for that. I, I don't see any more questions coming through. Um, so, um, I if there's anybody that is wanting more information from Marius. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we will. We can put him, put you into contact with with Marius, uh, or even via Jean. I would also like to thank Dieter very much for his time on uh, for taking for the for, for today, taking the time out, um, as well as then for for Marius. For um, yeah, I don't know what the time now is in Germany. What's the time there? Actually, the same. Same. Ah, fantastic. Yeah, two thirty. They just we got more sun, yeah, maybe. I think we're summer, yeah? Or are you in summertime now? Uh, yeah, it's way too hot right now in Germany. We're close to 40 degrees. Um, okay. okay. That's why I was so happy being in South Africa. <laughs> okay. And and um, also, lastly, I would just like to thank Medicare for um, for being a gold member with Kieser. And um, to all of our, our fellow attendees who attended, thank you very much for your time. We have recorded the session. So if you'd like to maybe recap or listen to um, the recording again, you're more than welcome to listen to it on, on Keith's YouTube cha channel. And um, yeah, join up and, 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 and dial in and yeah, you can tap into more information there. We've got a, a few other feeds. So over the year, Keith has been recording a few of the presentations. We are trying to build up a, a good database for clinical engineers and just for those who are interested in, in healthcare and wanting to learn a bit more, um, and we've got a few more interesting presentations building building up to the end of the year. Um, and so, yeah, thank you, Dieter, for, for posting out all those invites. And thank you, everybody, for your time. We actually on on um, 1431 now, so we are way ahead of time. Um, yeah, I, uh, there's no more, no more further questions. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much, Marius. Thank you, Jean. Thanks, Jeffrey. Yeah. Thanks for the invite. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day further. Have a good day. Bye.